Just when you thought you'd found the perfect advanced fixed lens compact, Olympus releases the XZ1 to further perplex you. The Olympus XZ1 joins the Canon PowerShot S95, PowerShot G12, Panasonic LX5, and Nikon P7000. But it differs from that lot in one prodigious way and that is its f1.8 aperture, which gives the XZ1 the brightest lens in its class. This camera also receives hand-me-downs from its larger Micro Four Thirds pen siblings, and we refer to it as the mini-me of the pen family. Right off the bat, you could see that the Olympus XZ1 is more compact. It's more comparable to the Panasonic LX5 when it comes to design. However, it styles its lens control ring after the Canon PowerShot S95, and it has a secondary control dial in the back, making this combination highly conducive for quick manual control adjustment. The only downside with this lens ring is that it's not customizable. But that wasn't a huge deal because most of the features controlled by this ring are fairly intuitive and useful. Now you also notice this camera lacks a viewfinder. It relies on an external accessory which Olympus offers for an EVF. And uh, this camera has a pop-up flash as well but you could add flashes to this. And of course you could add some of Olympus's fun accessories like the MAL1 macro light arm. Uh, it basically fires two lights on either side of close-up macro subjects and uh, kind of looks like Dr. Octopus. So for a monitor, the Olympus XZ1 has a 3-inch 610,000 pixel LCD. We weren't that crazy about the picture. We'd like a more refined LCD like on the P7000. Also, this camera's battery resides on the very small side. It's one of the smallest camera batteries we've ever seen in a camera of this ilk. So, Olympus promises 320 shots per charge. We got a little bit less than that, especially using HD video. But this camera can house up to a 64 gigabyte SD, SDHC, or SDXC card. We used a SanDisk Extreme Pro and had no problems whatsoever. We've also got a dedicated video record button for convenience, a wraparound zoom toggle for the 4X optical zoom, and it's worth noting that this lens is a 28 millimeter wide angle. Uh, allowing us to frame a bit more into our shots. Let's take a gander at the mode dial here. You'll see we have our standard shooting modes, program AE, aperture, shutter, manual, but you'll also see a new low light mode, and that mode allows you to adjust the ISO up to 6400 while the camera takes care of all the other adjustments. Also, just like the pen cameras, you'll notice an art mode, and uh, six art filters are carried down from the pen family, including grainy film, pinhole, pop art, and the new dramatic tone. In Intelligent Auto, we also get Live Guide, which walks us through certain photographic steps. If you're a beginner, there's a shooting tips portion of this, so um, it's very welcoming to beginner shooters. And of course we get a gaggle of scene modes for those who want to let the camera take care of particular shooting environments. But now we're going to get to the fun part, which is manual mode. This camera has a shutter speed that goes down to 60 seconds and it has a bulb. We also get raw shooting with this camera, a ton of white balance modes including manual, we get manual focus, however the manual focus was really not that great. You rely on the LCD and a magnified square and the pixel resolution on the LCD is already not that great so we recommend just relying on the macro, super macro and um, the 11 point system which you could actually adjust. Lastly, the overall aperture range was great. F1.8 all the way up to 8.0 at full wide angle. So the XZ1 has some of the best manual controls in its class, super bright aperture, great to shoot with. Let's talk about image quality. This camera has a 1 over 1.63 inch CCD and it's 10 megapixels. So with a wide f1.8 smaller megapixel count on a larger sensor, that means the megapixels are a bit larger and there's a lot more light coming in because of the wide aperture. Low light was great and it allowed us to shoot at lower ISO settings in lower light settings. 
In addition, super close up shooting, macro shooting, was fantastic with this camera. It was no sweat for this camera to artistically blur the background. Bright light was highly impressive, on par with the Canon PowerShot G12, S95, Panasonic LX5. We will say that the Olympus XZ1 exhibited a fair amount of noise in low light, especially when compared to the Canons, but uh, our ability to shoot at lower ISOs um, because of the f1.8 really came to the rescue with this camera. Also we noticed that the higher the ISO with this camera in low light, the more color degradation we experienced. So all in all, image quality is very good. It's uh, at the top of this genre. Now video quality is another story. There really aren't any video controls. You basically, no matter what mode you're in, just press the video record button and it starts. Um, HD video is motion JPEG, it's not that desirable. Large files, quality is not the best. The only bonus with video mode is the fact that we can optically zoom and you can also shoot in art modes. Other than that, this camera is really short staffed. If you really want video, go with the Panasonic LX5. Now the big question is going to be, why not just go for a pen camera? They're about $100, $150 more than the XZ1. And that all comes down to size of the camera. The pens are a bit larger than the XZ1. This is definitely more pocketable. Also, do you want to invest in an interchangeable lens system with the pen family or just stick with this bright f1.8? And lastly, image quality. The pen family has the micro four third sensor. This has the smaller 1 over 1.63 inch sensor. So those are three things to consider. Otherwise, if you want to stick with the fixed lens compact, the Olympus XZ1 is one of the best options in the genre. The mini-me of the pen family is definitely recommended by us here at InfoSync World. Until next time, I'm Mike Perlman.